What is up, my friends? Today on The Practical Pro Musician, we're going to talk about chugging coleslaw in the cafeteria and what that has to do with your music career and getting in with the cool kids. Stay tuned. We love playing music, but it seems like the odds of making a living as a professional musician are about as high as winning the lottery. So the big question is this. How do musicians like us with jobs, families and responsibilities get from where we are today to making a practical living playing music we love well my name is daniel hadaway and this show will give you the answers this is the practical pro musician what is up my friend welcome into another episode of the practical pro musician My name is Daniel. I'm so glad you are here. As always, um, you might, depending on, well, I guess the music's still playing right now in the background, but later on, once the music dies down, you might hear in the background the sounds of, I guess you call it the sounds of summer. It's uh, the, uh, I guess they're cicadas or crickets or something. I think my wife, if she hears this, she'll be rolling her eyes. She's definitely a wildlife person, so she's like, it's... It's this animal you're hearing. But whatever it is, they're going crazy outside right now. Um, Also, along with the sounds of summer, I think my voice is a little deeper today. And that is definitely the sound of pretty much everyone's voice in the Middle Tennessee area, which is what we call the central area of Tennessee around here. Uh, Because allergy stuff is just awful for pretty much everybody around here. I don't know what it is. There's just stuff that grows that makes everybody's... uh, body's unhappy. Um, so my voice is nice and deep because of that. I didn't turn into, uh, I'm not Barry White. Um, it's still me. It's just, my voice is a little deeper. (laughs) So, uh, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Um, today I'd love to talk to you about, well, I actually had a plan to talk about something else. And then at the last minute, I, I, a thought, struck me like a lightning bolt. I thought this might be more useful to you. So I, I switched gears. So please pardon me if for some reason what I'm saying today doesn't sound as put together as it normally does. Although I don't know if it ever really sounds put together. Um, but uh, it's it's not going to be put together. It's not going to be uh, super organized today. Uh, but uh, I have been, there's just a, a, basically I just kind of like a thought hit me that kind of brings together a few different things that have been happening in my life recently. Um, that is a great life lesson if you're trying to pursue a music uh, music career. And so I thought I'd share it uh, with you. So the first thing is I've been, uh, as you might have heard me mention a few times on this show, I am in the middle of working on launching uh, what is going to be called the Pro Musician Alliance. It's going to be um, a membership group of people who are hopefully just like you, just like me, trying to have a, a career in music, trying to trying to establish, trying to work, walk down that path of having a music career. Um, and there's going to be lots of, lots of different aspects to it. But one of the things that I'm most excited about having available in that group is um, every month I am going to sit down and interview a real working professional musician. Now, that may not sound that unique, on the surface, but the people that I'm interviewing are not, uh, necessarily like famous musicians, people that you read about in magazines. Uh, some of them are actually, um, but, uh, some, most of them are not. And, th- and as many of them are doing things in the music business that maybe you haven't considered even being a possibility for yourself. So it's not just people who are, touring as a guitar player full time, for example. Um, uh, I, one of the people I talked to is a, is a guitar tech for one of the most popular bands in the world right now. Um, and it's people like that. So it's, it's all different kinds of things. And there are people who are just touring as musicians as well. So it's just, it's going to be a mix, but the idea is that, um, we're going to identify common threads that all of them share. We're going to take advice from them on how they got where they're at. Um, it's, it's really cool. And so I've actually been, uh, interviewing a few people over this past week or so, uh, planning ahead for that. And I think I've done, as I'm recording this, I think I've done four or five 
of those interviews. And I, by the way, I'm going to, I'm going to share pieces of those interviews here on the podcast in the future with you as well. So, um, don't worry, you'll, you'll, you'll get, you'll get pieces of that soon. Uh, but I've started to connect the dots in some interesting ways, um, of things that, that even I, with what I teach, um, there's, there's kind of some core principles that I teach and thankfully, uh, for the most part, when I'm interviewing them, they seem to kind of validate and verify what I'm saying is true. Um, but they're actually, I'm actually learning new things. Um, and I'm, I'm connecting the dots in new ways of how all these different people in different areas of the music business who are all musicians, um, how they've established their careers. And so um, it's been really exciting to kind of learn new things that even I wasn't aware of before. Um, and so I was going to share one of those with you today. So um, that's one thing that's been going on. Along with that um, is, as I've mentioned many times on this podcast recently, we're in the middle of trying to sell our house so that because we're building a house and so all that goes along with that and uh this past week uh a week ago as i as i um am recording this we've actually like officially listed our house for sale which means that people start asking to come see your house you have showings you have open houses which means that at any the drop of a hat people say i want to come look at your house and you have to say, okay, we'll leave. And we have like three or four pets and, you know, a kid and all of our stuff. So we have to like clear that out every time and quickly vacuum the house one more time and all this stuff to make it look really nice. Um, and it's really tough not being in control of, you know, when you're even going to be in your house. They say, we want to come and you say, okay, I'm leaving now or I got to be out by this time. And, and then it's always frustrating when, uh, you know, we, we have the, the, one of the video doorbell things. And so we get notifications when someone walks in the house. So we know when the people show up. And so it's really frustrating when you put all this effort into like leaving the house and getting everything out. And then you get your hopes up. Like maybe this is the person who's going to, to buy our house or want to buy our house or at least make an offer on our house. And then they show up at the house and then like five minutes later, they walk out and, and drive away immediately. You're like, well, they probably are not going to make an offer on the house if they were only here for five minutes. They didn't even see everything in the house. They just walked out and said, this isn't for us. So that happened, but we actually did get an offer on our house this week. So that was exciting. So that happened. And then also I've been listening to another podcast. I listen to a lot of podcasts and read a lot of things. And I had this thought about, uh, Strangely enough, the movie Never Been Kissed, the Drew Barrymore movie. Um, and so what's funny is all these things like kind of like collided into a big bang in my mind. And I'm like, holy cow, this is something that's so true for every musician. So I want to share that with you. So first off, to go back to me interviewing all these professional musicians, one thing that I've realized is, like I said, I think I've interviewed four or five by this point when I'm recording this, four, four or five different professional musicians, all making a living in music in wildly different ways. And what's funny is I know for, I think it's three of them at least. And there's one more person that I'm going to interview soon that I know this is true of him as well. So that would make four of the five or six people that I've interviewed. They all point to the same one person that I know as well that really kind of kickstarted their career in music. He was the one who recommended each of them for what they are doing, which is insane. Now, part of that is because most of these folks are in my circle of friends, and so we all kind of know the same people. But it's interesting that there are that many people who now have full-time careers in music, and they all can point to the same one person and say, he's the one who really helped me out get started. Um, and in some cases he recommended them for a gig. In some cases he just said, look, I will, I will give you an opportunity, um, myself. Um, in some cases he just encouraged them and said, here's what you need to do in order to get the gig that you want. Um, all those things are true in different, uh, formats about these stories. So all these people can point to one person and say, that guy helped me out immensely. Same thing with, to now move on to the second part, which is us trying to sell our house. We actually listed our house for sale seven days ago. 
and really yesterday is when we got the offer on our house. So it had been listed for six days. And in those six days, we had had one open house where I think there was probably 10 or 15 different groups of people that came in and looked at our house, families or whatever, plus another 13 showings of our house. So you can imagine that averages out to like twice per day. We were having to pack up our things and get out of our house and wait around for someone to show up who most likely is not going to like our house anyway. So lots of people at 13 plus 10, that's like over 20 groups of people who've come to look at our house and we finally got an offer on our house. So we showed our house to a bunch of people, but only one offer came through and we only needed one offer because you only need to see, you can only sell your house to one person. You can't sell it to everybody. Um, there's only, there's only one in my house. I only got one. I'm not, I'm not, a not living that large yet. I only got one house right now. And, uh, so it only takes one person, uh, to, to want your house for you to be successful. It only took one person in each of these other people, these other musicians careers, um, to help them find their path and, established their music career. And then to kind of kind of tie it all with the, the, the movie Never Been Kissed with Drew Barrymore. Um, I haven't seen this movie in a while, but I do remember um, this story was shared at another podcast I listened to and, I was, and, and I'm actually, so I'm paraphrasing a paraphrase, but I, I mean, it's a funny movie. It's a great movie. Um, I'm no shame that I, that I like a, the occasional chick flick. I don't know if that's even really a chick flick. I don't know. Um, is that offensive to say chick flick? I don't know. Everyone, I don't know. You know what I mean? Romantic comedy. I should have called it romantic comedy. So I'm sorry if I offended you. Um, But anyway, there's a part of the movie where Drew Barrymore's character, you know, she has to, I think she's doing like an undercover thing. And so she's back in high school, but she's not popular and she needs to be with the popular kids. And um, I think it's her brother, right? Whoever it is, it's uh, what's his name? Uh, Arquette. David Arquette's character does the thing like in the in the lunchroom where he like eats that whole thing of coleslaw and like everyone thinks he's cool for it, which is the most classic high school thing ever to think that someone's cool for doing something like that. Um, but then he starts walking around talking about Drew Barrymore's character saying, oh yeah, you know, um, something like uh, I used to go out with her, but she dumped me. I wasn't cool enough for her or whatever. She's really cool or whatever. And I'm obviously, I think I'm really messing the story up, but that's the basic idea he basically goes around telling everyone about how cool she is. And then everyone, all the cool kids start thinking that Drew Barrymore's character is cool all of a sudden. And at some point he says, David Arquette's character says something to Drew Barrymore along the lines of, uh, if you want to get in with the cool kids, you only need one cool kid to think you're cool or something like that. You only really only need to get one cool kid to, to, to like you. And then you're in with the cool kids. And that's definitely also true in the music business. Um, without saying cool kids, you don't need, it, it can get frustrating if you're trying to reach out or trying to connect with lots of different people and no one really is giving you the time of day. Um, musically speaking, and this could also go for anything you do on social media or anything like that. It, it, it can feel like you're, you know, trying to run through mud or whatever. It just like, you're not getting anywhere. And I just want to encourage you it, that over and over again, and this is true in my own career as well, that it really only takes one person. You only need one person in most cases to recommend you to pick up on what you're actually putting out there to understand you to to mentor you to encourage you to give you advice whatever it is i think a lot of times you know for me it was you know it took me it took me the whole week of of showing our house and and getting through 13 of them and it's funny because my wife and I were talking this morning where, you know, it's like, man, we just got finally, I think we both had kind of, kind of finally accepted that for a while, our house may not sell for a while. And so we just need to get used to the fact that we're going to be doing these house showings all the time. And, uh, we kind of accepted it as our current reality. And as soon as we accepted it, of course, someone came along and, and, and zapped us out of it and we don't have to keep doing it. Um, but we had to keep reminding ourselves that, it, this is not like selling widgets on online where you need a bunch of customers. You only need one person to like your house and want to buy it in order to sell your house. Um, 
we had gotten spoiled the previously when we, when we sold our house, we sold our, the first house that we sold in, uh, I think it was like 20 minutes. It was someone actually booked a showing before we even listed it. They came and saw it. And within 20 minutes of it going online live listed, they put a full price offer on our house. Like the pictures hadn't even been uploaded to the listing yet. And they, and they bought it. So, um, we gotten spoiled to that and thought, man, a 100% of the people who look at our house are going to like it and want to buy it. And I think in our music careers, it, you know, I think, I think, uh, getting that, getting to that place in your music career is a lot like selling a house, whereas it can, it's a big undertaking. It's a big purchase for somebody else to make. Um, but you only need one person to do it, to help you out with it. And so there might be, you know, you might have metaphorically speaking with your music career, you might have 20 or 30 house showings. Um, but you only need one person to believe in you, to recommend you all those different things. Um, you only need one cool kid to think you're cool. And then all the rest of the cool kids will think you're cool. You don't need all of the cool kids to, uh, like you, you don't need the entire, music community that you want to be a part of to all the, all at the same time or all of them, you don't need to convince all of them that you've got what it takes and that you're the person to hire. You need to convince one person and you may not even know which of those people it is. So don't take it as discouraging if you're not getting the traction you think you should have, or you'd like to have in your music career right now because you don't know which one of those people will be the one that can help you out. So just keep plugging away. And that also means on the flip side, carry yourself in a way where you don't ever know who's listening. In fact, that's one of the interviews that I did this last week. He's a bass player for an extremely popular country artist right now. And he even said that he's like, always, always every gig that you go to, every situation you play your instrument in, always play like it's an audition because you never know who is listening. You never know who's in the audience. You never know what that person in that band that you might be sitting in with or whatever it is, what else they do or who else they know. And so you've always got to be auditioning all the time, even for the gig you already have. Keep auditioning, keep reminding folks of why it is they hired you if they hired you or why you should stick around. Um, longer than maybe they planned for you to originally. Either way, it only takes one person. So don't give up if, you, if you're if you out there, putting yourself out there and you're not getting any traction yet. It, you know, it's not a jump from, you know, you don't need 30 people to believe in you and you've got zero right now. So you gotta gain 30 more believers, so to speak, in your music career. You really only need one. So you're not trying to add 30 more. You're not you know, you're not a long way away. You could be very close. You're just one person away from maybe making that real progress that you want in your music career. So whether you're, (laughs) whether you're establishing a music career, whether you're selling a house or whether you're just trying to be the cool kid in high school and you can't eat a bunch of coleslaw, you're only one person away from getting at least closer to your dreams come true. I was going to say to your dreams coming true, and maybe you are, but you're only one person away from the progress that you want. Let's say that. So thanks for joining me today. Um, By the way, if you are interested in that membership program, the Pro Musician Alliance, go to promusician.org. And then once you go there on the top right corner, there's a I think it's a pink button that says enroll now. Now, the fun fact is if you click on that button and click enroll now, as I'm recording this, enrollment is not open. So um, what you can do is you can click on that button and you can then sign up for the waiting list. And you're not committing to anything. You're not paying any money or anything like that. You're just saying, hey, let me know as soon as enrollment is open. Let me know what it's about. I want to be the first to know. So if you go over to promusician.org and click on that button, um, enroll now in the top right corner, you can sign up for the waiting list and you will be the first to know when enrollment is open. And hint, hint, it's going to be extremely affordable for you to be a part of this with us. And it not only will be a bunch of interviews, like I mentioned before, but it will be the most refreshing, different kind of musician community that you've ever been a part of, because it's going to be a collection of musicians who, for the most part, believe like I do, which is you're not going to get a career. I'm not going to have a music career. 
if we all are competing with each other, we need to help each other out in every way possible. So if you that sounds like something you wanna be a part of, go to promusician.org, click on that enroll now button in the top right corner and you can sign up for the waiting list and you'll be the first to know. All right, well thank you my friend for joining me this week again. It always means a lot that you spend your time with me and we will talk again very soon. Bye for now.